Hello grade 6 and welcome to your first social studies video from me anyway. I posted a couple YouTube ones for you to look at earlier. Um, for the next few social studies classes we are going to be focusing on American history which is really my favorite part of the United States unit so I'm a little bit sad that we can't do this together in person but I'm hoping that through these videos you can learn a little bit more um, than you would just from reading what's in your booklet. So you're still going to do some reading, you're going to do some fill in the blanks, but what this video will do is it'll give you maybe a bit more of an overview, some more information, some more explanation, and also there are some pictures and maps that are hopefully going to help you in your understanding. So before we begin, um, I just want to make it very clear that in these videos we are going to cover over 200 years worth of history in just a few short videos. So we're not gonna spend a long time on any of these events. You probably could spend a few weeks studying each one individually. That's how much information there is available. Um, but we just kind of have to hit them all very quickly. Um, just learn the basics and then move on just based on how much time we have. So um, get ready for a real quick look at American history. So before we begin, I just wanted to review some of the stuff that we were talking about before the Christmas break, which seems like ages ago. But one of the things we talked about really even at the beginning of the unit was that Canada and the USA are neighbors. And we talked about what that meant in terms of your neighbors with somebody if they live close by to you. So Canada and the United States right beside each other. Um, but also we talked about being neighbors and what the biblical sense of that word was. And we talked about loving our neighbor. And part of loving our neighbor is understanding them. Okay, so it is important that we know about American history, that we don't just focus on our own history, that we know about other parts of the world as well, and especially the country that is right next door to us. All right, so we need to understand our American neighbor's history. And um, it's going to help us understand how these two countries came to share the longest undefended border in the world. You're going to read that phrase in your booklet pages. Now, I just want to explain what that phrase means. It means that Canada and the United States have the longest land border. Oh, you can't really see that, can you? Change color. Pink, maybe. Oh, there you go. Um, Canada and the U.S. have the longest land border between these two countries that is undefended. So what that means is... Um, it's not defended in a military sense, though if you've ever crossed the Canada and U.S. border, you'll know that, you know, you have, you'll get stopped by a border guard and you'll have to declare that you're not carrying anything dangerous, things like that. Um, so there's security, but it's not like there is a, a wall all the way across it. It's not like there are soldiers camped out, you know, on either side of the border, kind of ready to start a war at any time. Okay, so that's what it means. Longest undefended border. Um, it means you can't just sort of walk into the United States. You need to have a passport. You need to explain what you're going to do there. Um, but there's no military bases camped out all along the border. All right, so let's jump in to actually longer than 200 years ago. So hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the area that we now call North America. So that's this right here. Oops. Why is it not drawing? Uh oh, oh, there it goes. Okay, so the area we call North America didn't have the borders that it does today. So today it's separated into different countries. It's separated even within those countries. Like in Canada, we have provinces. In the United States, they have states, things like that. Um, but there were people living in North America. And there were all these different tribes of people with different traditions, different customs. They had their own um, way of governing themselves. They had their own history, their own culture, and they all lived in North America. Okay, and we call those people, you'll hear them called the Native Americans, you'll hear them called First Nations or Aboriginal peoples, means the same thing, the people who were in North America first. Okay, and as you were doing your state project you may have come across some of these names. If you take a look at this map, and maybe as you were studying the history of your state, um, you noticed some of these names and some of these tribes being mentioned. That is because they were the, the original ones who lived there. Now, something that we have talked about before in the novel study history video, actually, there's a bit of an overlap here, was the fact that people in Europe, 
So right here. People in Europe were exploring the world because they were trying to make it to this area of the world. So remember, they wanted to get things like spices, things like silk. Um, we call those like luxury goods. So basically things that they couldn't produce in Europe that would show that they were rich and powerful. Um, and even things just that made their lives more enjoyable. If you think about spices, I I think we often take it for granted that you can probably open a cupboard in your kitchen and if you're cooking something, you have all sorts of spices to make your food taste interesting, right? In Europe, they, they can't grow the spices in Europe. The climate is not correct for it. So they didn't have any of those things. Their food was pretty bland and boring. They wanted to get those spices in order to spice up their food, um, but also to show if you had spices, that meant that you were something. That meant that you were... Um, powerful and rich. So it was a bit of a status symbol. Now, it was very dangerous to travel from Europe to this area of Asia and these islands here by land. Um, just because if you think about it, if you wanted to send somebody off to that area of the world to get you spices or silks, you would have to send a lot of money with them. Um, and then people who would be living, you know, along these areas here, would obviously notice some people from Europe traveling and deduce that they probably have a lot of money, steal their money. Um, so it was quite dangerous to travel along there. So they started looking for ways to get to that area of the world instead by boat. And what ended up happening there was they started discovering new lands that they didn't know about before. And we're going to focus here on North America. So you can see all of these lines traveling from Europe to North America. So they, they discovered that North America existed. And some of the explorers that you're going to read about, I have a few pictures here. Um, here, this one's Christopher Columbus. Here's Jean Cabot. Here's Samuel de Champlain. He was French. Um, so all of these men were, they were set out in ships to discover new lands and to claim them for their country. I think I've got, yes, I have another map right here. So once they discovered that this land existed that they didn't know about, what these countries in Europe started doing was basically claiming territory as their own. So you can see on the map here, it's color coded, like the purple parts were claimed by Spain, um, the green claimed by England, the, the yellow claimed by France. So basically what these, what these European nations would do is they eventually ended up sending people to live in these new lands, well, I call them new, they were new to the Europeans, but they had always been there. Um, and they sent these people to go and they live there and create what's called a colony. Okay, now the goal of a colony is really to gain power and wealth for the country that they came from. All right, so um, they would control the land and then they would control all of the natural resources that were there. So if your land had lots of lumber on it, they would, you know, cut down all the trees and then they'd use the lumber and they'd create profit from that or whatever it was at the time. So the, the point of colonies is to send people from your country over to live there and make you some money. Now, something that's really important to note here is that these countries from Europe who were setting up colonies, those colonies or those lands, they weren't empty, okay? There were native peoples, I'll jump back to this map over here, filling, for instance, the whole United States. It was full of people who already lived there and who had lived there for hundreds and hundreds of years. So what these Europeans did was really they came in and they set up shop on somebody else's land. You can imagine um, you and your family, maybe you've been living in a house for your whole life, I don't know, or maybe a few, a few years. And then if somebody just came in and took your house and said, you need to move out, we're moving in. That's kind of what happened there. Um, so we just have to remember that this land originally did not belong to these Europeans and it's going to cause a lot of tension between the native peoples and the people who came in, the people from Europe. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail. Now, the British, we're going to focus a lot on the British. We're going to talk a little bit about the French as well. Um, the British set up colonies on the eastern coast of the United States and if you studied these for your state project, then you hopefully read about this in history. So on the East Coast, 
we have what eventually became known as the 13 original colonies. So these were the first colonies that were set up by the British. This is where the people moved in first, which does make sense geographically if you think about it. Let's jump back here. Oh, that's kind of messy. This map. So they set up along this coast, which makes sense because that's the closest to Europe where the people were coming from. So they kind of started out over here and then eventually over time people moved westward. Now something to note about these colonies is that the people who lived there were British, okay? They had come from England and they were setting up a new life here in this new land, but they were loyal to the British crown um, they were British citizens, okay? They weren't quite called Americans yet. They were under the control and rule of Britain. Now, we can't go into too much detail, um, but it's worth briefly mentioning because it does come up in your reading. There's something called the Seven Years' War, and the, the result that you need to pay attention to of the Seven Years' War was really that the, the British defeated the French, um, because earlier on, let's go back to this map, right, you can see England and France, the green and the yellow, both claiming parts of North America. The Seven Years' War, one of the results of that was basically that the French lost control. So there were still French people living in North America, but the British were the ones who were controlling more of the territory. Now, we're already to the point in history where the British people are slowly going to become Americans. And there were a few reasons why the British people became Americans. And really it came down to the people who were living in these colonies felt like they were being mistreated by the British government. Okay, and there were a few reasons for that. Number one, the Seven Years' War had cost a lot of money. So the British... Um, nation had to send a lot of soldiers over to the new world to fight this seven years war and it costs a lot of money to keep an army going think about it you've got to have lots of soldiers and they all have to have you know weapons and uniforms and food and all that kind of stuff um, so it's very expensive to have an army and to fight a war so what the British government had been doing was increasing the taxes for these 13 colonies because the war was being fought, you know, on their territory. So the people in the 13 colonies were having more, having to pay more taxes than they would if they still lived in Britain. Okay, so the British government was taxing them extra. They had to pay more money. And then the phrase that quite often gets used is um, taxation without representation. So part of also what was happening was there was nobody in the British government that spoke for or represented the 13 colonies. So if you think about even here in Canada, right, we elect officials to be our representatives, right? There could be a member of provincial parliament that represents a certain area. Um, and that person is kind of like the voice of the people who live there. So if they had some sort of concern, they would talk to their member of provincial parliament and then that MPP would bring the concern to the government. Well, the people in the 13 colonies didn't have anybody in the British government who represented them. So they were getting unfairly taxed and they really didn't have a way to tell the British government that that's what was happening or to um, bring their grievances to the British government, we could say. All right. Um, another thing that ended up happening was after the Seven Years' War, the British had, ta had taken over more of the French territory and the British government um, took some land that had been under French control and it was given to some of the First Nations, so some of those Native Americans who had been living in the area. And then after that, it was given to Quebec, not the 13 colonies. So they were quite upset about that. And they started actually calling themselves Americans. So by calling themselves Americans, really what they're doing is they're separating themselves from the British government. Okay, so they're, they're um, saying, really, we don't want to be British anymore. You are mistreating us. And oh, I almost forgot to talk about the picture down here. Um, this is a picture of a famous event that's called the Boston Tea Party. Maybe you've heard about it before. 
one of the things that the British government was taxing was tea. Okay, so if you think about these British people who are living in these colonies, they're starting to think maybe they don't want to be British anymore. Um, but, you know, the stereotype is British people like to drink a lot of tea. So one of the things that the British government was doing was basically taxing these people or essentially making their tea cost a whole lot more. They did it with some other things, stamps and sugar as well. Um, but the tea was sort of a, a point of contention for these people in these colonies. And what ended up happening was, in protest, some men dressed up as Native Americans and they went to the Boston Harbor and there was a ship that came in with a shipment of tea for the colonies and in protest to the tax, they took all of the tea and they dumped it into the harbor, okay? So this is a very, very famous act of protest. So the Boston Tea Party, it's not like a little, you know, sit down at a fancy table and sip some tea. It was really an act of protest where they took tea, they dumped it in the harbor and destroyed it in protest. And what ended up happening was um, some men and some leaders got together um, and they created a document that's called the Declaration of Independence. And the name of that document really is telling you what it does. To declare something is to say something. And to be independent means like that you can do something on your own or you can be on your own. So really what this document was, was these people in these 13 colonies saying, we don't want to be part of Britain anymore. We want to be our own country that is not controlled by Britain. All right. So they sent that off to the king. So the Declaration of Independence, very, very famous document, basically saying we don't want to be British anymore. Then came, oh, I forgot the title here, um, the Revolutionary War. So the Revolutionary War, it's also known as the War for Independence. That happened because King George, so the English king, obviously didn't want these 13 colonies to disobey him or to break away from his rule and his control, right? Because by controlling them, he had more power. He also had more wealth, all right? Um, so what they did was they ended up fighting. So the, the War for Independence or the Revolutionary War is these 13 colonies now calling themselves Americans versus the British. And what ended up happening was the the Americans, as they're now called, won the war for independence. They defeated Britain and became their own country. So this is really the start of the United States as we know it now. And then just one more thing before we end the video today, um, just to be aware that the general of the Revolutionary War, George Washington, so the victorious general, he became the first president of the United States. And if you've ever seen American Money, their $1 bill, he's on there um, as a commemoration of what he did in American history. So he was the, the general, he was victorious, and he became the first president. So we're going to leave it there. We will continue with American history next time. Um, for now, make sure if you haven't read the pages that I told you to on Teams, make sure that you read those. And then you also have some fill in the blanks to do on page 28, the first three sections. So introduction, early settlement, independence. If you can't just remember off the top of your head, you can always go back, rewatch the video. I probably say a lot of the words. Um, otherwise, go back in your reading, starting on page 30, and the answers will be in there as well.